Today we're going to do another open it up to help someone out video, but since we're going to do it, might as well film it so anybody that has a similar problem or has the graveside diner, they can hopefully fix theirs. So, anyhow, the problem the person's having is when they plug it in, if they wiggle the cord, the sound comes in and out, goes back and forth, so it's got a uh, bad connection. And then one of the pictures they sent me, the wire physically broke. So, um, I went ahead and started, we got the watch, peeling the bottom off. You all know how to do it, hopefully. And then I pried out the circuitry, uh, broke the glue basically using a spudger. Also pried the bottom off using a spudger. There's the circuit board and a whole bunch of little wires attached to it. When you peel the bottom off, there is a at least on this one, a purple and white wire that runs along the front side. Yeah, right here. That was stuck to the mat. So be careful if you're going in here with an X-Acto knife, which is why I like using a spudger. You would slice these right off. And they're also stuck to the mat. So as you pull it, here's a chance you can rip the wires off. They go to the two lights down here. One here and one on the other side. So, let's take a look at this circuit board and see where everything goes. I'm trying to set it down without breaking it because in the process I already popped off a gravestone uh, just peeling the bottom out. So I'm trying not to have this drop on anything that it can break. So some might recognize this as one of those rotating drums with the light that you know, <laughs> makes the ghost in the windows. Spare parts everywhere. So I'll use that to help prop it up. For now. Alright, speaker. See this black housing right here. Circuit board. We got the blob chip on this upright piece here. Speaker just plugs in with the two-prong Molex connector. All the wires are soldered to the bottom. This circuit board is held in with one screw right there next to the speaker. So Get a small screwdriver. And then screw the one screw. So. Looks like it's supposed to have all four screws, but this one only has one. So either it wasn't put together very well, quality control, or it was uh, open once before. Not by me. I haven't done it. So. I am going to take some close-up pictures of the board to put in at the end of the video because the, well, it's really hard to see all these little wires. The wires that come through the on-off slash volume knob, they are pink, light green, light blue, white, and yellow. The uh, pink or peach. Depends on how the light hits it. I'm going to go with peach. The peach wire goes to the power port right here. The green wire is soldered next to the PCB upright. It's the second one down. And again, I will get some close-up pictures of it all. The white wire from this bundle Let's see what I twist it a little. There we go. White wire is, if you're looking at the board, we got four solder joints and a big blob. The white wire is right here, which is attached to the resistor on the other side that says Q5. The blue wire is below the green one right here. I'm going to try and zoom in or get it closer to the camera in just a moment. Uh, the yellow wire is the top solder joint. So that's all five. These three plus this one and then the one that goes to the power port. So if you have a problem with this switch not working, those are your five soldered points. The power so if you can turn this on, then your power one's probably still soldered pretty good. But if you lose 
or wiggle it, it's probably right here, or the wires inside the switch itself have come loose, uh, which is also unfortunately pretty common to the desolder. As far as the rest of the lighting, because all these are pretty much just lights, um, since the speaker has its own right here and there's no animatronics on this piece. Uh, this bottom corner, which is on the other side, it says GD. Sorry, a chunk of the glue. We have all the yellow wires and all the orange wires are soldered in this lower right hand spot holding the PCB board or the uh, cop on chip board to your lower left. So, like that. Right above it, I'm sorry, one orange wire is here, the other orange wire is right above it. The next two solder points up are all white wires, which one of the white wires, this one right here, is actually saw from the power switch is soldered to these purple wires. And this is a pretty confusing little set. It's hard to tell you where they all go because you have to keep flipping it over. And they're all soldered to different resistors and the uh, space numbers are all covered by the resistors. So I'm going to do a close-up of it for you. There's a lot of glue snot on this board from where they hot glued it. I believe this uses the standard transistors that Lee Max is known for. Yep, C1815s. They use the same transistors in most of their houses that don't have any animated parts to have the lights flash back and forth in a pattern. And there's four of them in a row. It's a very standard setup for Lee Max. Uh, the Lost Souls Prison has it. As an example, as another piece that uses this, this same section right here with the resistors that come off of it on both sides is used on a few of their pieces and what's nice is these are standard transistors so if you blow one or one of them fails you can buy a baggie of them they usually come in baggies of 10 and just desolder and resolder just make sure you do it in the right direction or else they don't work right so and then if you pop one of these resistors uh, this row they're all the same. And this row, they're all the same. So if you blow one of these or they burn, you can match the color code from the ones above it. Like I said, it's a very common setup on a lot of their non-animated, only light-driven houses. So um, you might come across a another piece that has no animatronics in it and say, oh, this thing's popped. How do I... Where do I find it? Just look on eBay. As far as the color code goes, you can go on Google, type in resistor color code, type in the color bars, and it'll tell you the ohms and the percentage. If it's a 1%, 5%, 2%, 10% resistor. But the ohmage, the resistance level, is the important part. But when you do do the transistor, if you have to replace one, make sure you replace it with the same one. The collector, emitter, and base uh, are in different positions, and they all have different forward voltages for functioning. So these are C1815s. If you buy something that's not the same, it may not work. You may burn it up. You may damage the chip on board, this little blob chip here. Um, so, But it's a very standard part. I know I bought baggies of them. Unfortunately, I can't find them. I apparently have misplaced them. But now I'm going to move my chair. And I'm going to try and bring this closer to the camera so we can get a better view. So there is the top. You can see they have the transistors labeled. That's the Q, Q5, Q6, Q7, Q8, and the chip is ICI. But the resistors, which one of them is not flush, all the numbers are underneath, so I can't tell you their locations. But here is the back of the board. This is the important part. Because these are the wires that are going to break off and fail. So, let me see if I can zoom the camera down so I can use a screwdriver to point. Yeah. 
I'm going to try. Oh, wrong way. There we go. We yeah, get some pretty close. Now we just got to focus and center. Might be too close for the camera. All right, let's see if we can get this thing to focus. Oh, you gotta love technology. It's trying. The wrong way. Yeah, it's about as close as I'm gonna get it with uh, with vision. So, if your switch right here and you wiggle it starts to fail, it's probably going to be one of these four soldered wires. Like I said, the fifth one is soldered right there. Uh, this, you would have to flip the house on its back and try and solder inside, or you can unscrew it and break the glue and pull this out. There's a little nut on the back, and then they put some hot glue on it. So here's the white wire from the switch, which as you can see, now I have it opposite. Just follow these four solder points to right here. Here's the cob on board, uh, board technically. And then if you go over, you can see the one, two, three, four, and five, pretty much right in the middle of the board to the side. That's the white wire. Then you have these three, which are also from the switch. Here's the yellow, here's the green, here's the blue. Yellow, green, blue. So there are more in line of these four at the other end. One, two, three, four. And again, the fifth wire is the power wire, which makes the this connect to this so it turns on your board. If we flip it over, the white wire is connected to this resistor. This lonely guy right here in the middle that's separated from the rest. Then we have these three wires, which are connected to these three resistors. One, two, and three. Little guy and two bigger ones. Yep. So, those are your connection points. Your lighting, which is pretty much every wire on here, I'm going to go with the black wires or the negatives. That's pretty common how Lemax wires their stuff. And you got a bundle right here. And I'm also going to say the purple wires are the negatives because you have a bundle right next to it. Right there. And they both share the same common pad on the, the track of the circuit board. So you got orange and yellows. We go up one solder point, single orange. The single orange is twisted with a yellow that goes up inside on the left side, looking from the front of the house. This orange and yellow is two different wires, which they go to the right side, looking from the front of the house. All these white wires right here are twisted with the black wires, which go top center of the house. It's most likely your roof lights that are straight there that are right behind the sign. So The LED light failure from the circuit board is very minimal. It's usually the wires that come off of this because this moves. Their strain relief isn't very good. So if you have a problem with this house, there's a very good chance that you've lost one of these, probably the fatter one, because it's also a really crappy solder joint. And you can see the ball. Instead of it being a smoother joint like these, it's balled up. So they did a pretty bad job. Of course, if the first thing I'd recommend you doing, you zoom back out so we're just staring at this small surface area. Probably helps if I go the right way. There we go. Always check this. So if you don't want to tear the bottom of your house off and risk breaking a piece off like that, uh, just pop it open, use your fingernails. If you can't get it with your fingernails, 
a small piece of metal, pocket knife, spudger, and pry this open. They pop together with pins. Like so. You can see the pins, and the pins go into the respective holes. And of course we have the wheel that clicks on and off. You have to take this itty bitty little screw out. And if you happen to break off the pins and it won't stay shut, a dab of hot glue. Do not use like Gorilla or super glue because you'll never open it up to fix it if it ever fails. So, and I'll show you where they solder in here. So that way if you break the switch, you know where those five wires go because it's pretty important. You don't want to reverse them. I'm going to zoom in again. And focus. There we go. Keep my hand back there. So. Holding the switch box, so the word Lemax, see there's Lemax, when I rotate it, that means the, the letters are be read from this side. The top is your fat white wire, and again I'm off camera, focus, there we go. So fat white wire, your thin white or yellow, depending on the light, it's, uh, it's not quite white on mine, goes to the second one down. Your green wire is the third or middle one. Your blue wire is the next one. And then last but not least is the peach or orange, because they're pastel colors, goes to this bottom connection where these two screws are. These two screws not only hold the, it's a potentiometer switch or rheostat, down, but it also acts as connection points. The orange wire, which comes in over here, is the wire that's connected here. That's what completes the circuit. When you power this, it sends power here. When you flip this on, it then sends power down the other wires. That's how you get the sound and your lights. It also powers a circuit board, which is why these five wire switches focus, thank you, are very important that you wire them right and you solder them to the right spots on these boards. You can probe around the boards and see if you can figure it out if you break one on a piece that I can't help you with or anybody else can help you with due to the rarity of the piece or the age of the piece or nobody's worked on that piece yet. But you got to be very careful because you do not want to send power to the wrong spots on the board because you're going to send the full four and a half volts from the power supply and if it's not going through a resistor, as an example, you can easily blow a component. The cob on the blob chip cob, very, very bad to pop that one because it's not replaceable. Um, the other components on the board, they can technically be replaced. Resistors, transistors, dime a dozen. Not that hard to find. You can, they come in multiple packs. You can't just buy one but you can buy replacement parts. Whereas uh, that little cob on board, or cob, blob, chip, whatever you want to call it, uh, that's the whole brains of this thing. And unfortunately, you pop one of those and you're uh, SOL. You have to find another one that's either broken to repair yours, or you'd have to just buy another unit completely. Um, sometimes you can find houses at Goodwill or thrift stores that you can use for parts. That's what I do. You'd be surprised. And they're usually not that expensive. So the big chip here, the black one, is probably still replaceable as well. I don't know. I think it's a timing chip, but you know what? I'm going to look it up real fast just to tell you what that black chip is. So I do not recognize the part number. The part number is T like Tom, D like dog, A like Apple, 2822. Hmm, 
it's an audio amplifier. Never mind. It does nothing to do with the timing. And that's what controls your speaker volume. So now I know. Yeah, so that's a standard chip that could be replaced. So if you have this piece and any component on the board has gone out from the capacitors, which there's five, to the four transistors, the audio amplifier, or any of the resistors, every excuse me, there's six capacitors. Anything can be replaced except for this blob chip. So if you're having a problem with this house and you open it up and you have a burnt component, it is repairable. Of course, if one of your components is burnt, make sure none of your wires are shorted or arced. Uh, a lot of times I've seen in houses I've got secondhand, the wires get pinched when they're glued back in and it cuts through the sheathing and they short out to themselves and that then burns the component out on the board. So if you have a component that has failed, inspect the wiring. Look for any cuts or frays. Generally, if they're all shoved inside, you shouldn't have a problem, but quality control, eh, not always the greatest. Also, if somebody else has used the house second, you, know, you got a second hand, there's a chance that you might have a house that has a uh, been, excuse me, has been opened and has not been put back together properly and has frayed a wire. Um, what's nice about these non-animated circuit boards is they're a lot easier to repair as long as this one little piece isn't damaged. And if it is, you can always put in a generic timing setup. You can go on uh, YouTube and look them up and watch videos on how to build them. And you can always contact people that build timing circuits. Uh, you can get them on Wish and AliExpress, etc. Generic LED timing circuits that flash and do things. Um, and put one in here. You might have to change the voltage though, just so you're aware. Limax, of course, 90% of their stuff is 4.5 volts. A lot of the aftermarket timing circuits, like I'll show you one. This has a multi-functions. It's a circuit from a YouTuber called Big Clive. It's a LED driver controller, and it has flash and rotate. It makes all the LEDs do it, but it's 12 volts. So if you... And I use it for testing 12-volt RGB LEDs. If you... And I'd add in there, you'd have to give it a 12 volt power. Plus, your lights would not flash in the same patterns. And that necessarily won't work for this specific setup because each LED is a different color. Um, RGB LEDs, you have four wires coming off of them, not two. Just using it as an example of something that can be modified so you don't have to throw your house away if you have a failed circuit board and you just want it to light up and flicker and flash and just random. So you won't have any sound, though. I'm going to get some close-up shots of this. We'll put it at the end of the video so you can see the components. I'll get some good light on it, I hope. And that way you can also see where the wires are when I flip it over and show you the back side. So it's just an informational one. This house is not broken, except for the piece I did break off. And it was just to show you how to inspect, check, and fix if you have a failed component and or a broken wire. So hopefully that helps. Uh, on this specific piece. Any questions, just leave them below and I'll do my best to answer. Of course, uh, stay tuned for more repair videos of different animated or non-animated pieces for miniature villages. Have a good one.